Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at the interaction between the at risk and the passive activity loss together. Now, th this recording assumes the following it assumes that you know what at risk limit is, so you know what this topic is, and you also know the passive activity loss limits. How, what's the general idea of both of these concepts? Because in this session, we're going to combine them together. If you don't know what these concepts are, please go back and view the at-risk limit separately and the passive activity loss. This topic is covered in an income tax course, CPA exam regulation section, and en enrolled agent exam. Now, if you're studying for the CPA exam and you do get a question like this one, that one the one that we're going to be discussing today, it's good news, bad news situation. Good news is they're giving you hard questions, difficult questions. It means you are doing good on the exam. The bad news, it's a challenging concept, but we'll try to simplify it as much as possible. Now, I always like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on a personal as well as a professional level. If you have a LinkedIn account, please connect with me on LinkedIn. If you have a Facebook account, if you're a Facebook user, like my Facebook page, and you could also connect with me on a personal level if you chose to. Uh, my YouTube is where I house all my lectures, and you really want to subscribe to my YouTube uh, like the YouTube if you do like them, share them, put them in playlist, email your classmate, email your friends if, if you know they're interested. I rely on you to spread the word. I do have a LinkedIn account and on my website, I house all my lecture organized by course and chapter. This recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. If you are watching this recording and if you enjoy this type of sessions, please check out Jaeger CPA Review. If you are a college student or if you are studying for your CPA exam, you will have hundreds of hours of video lectures, thousands of multiple choice questions with solution, simulation textbook, audio lectures, electronic flashcards, plus others. If you use my code PMF, you'll get 10% off. And this way you could supplement if you're taking the courses, you could supplement your accounting courses and prepare for the CPA exam at the same time. Benefit yourself and benefit this channel. So today we're going to be talking about the at-risk limitation, but it's going to be in conjunction with the passive activity loss. So you can deduct losses from activity to the only to the extent of the taxpayer at risk. Now we discuss what the taxpayer at risk. The taxpayer at risk is how much the, the, tax, the taxpayer could potentially loses from that business. So how much did this individual invested in and what happened to their basis throughout the, the period. Any losses this allowed due at risk limitation are carried forward until the at risk amount is increased. So hopefully you know this, that the at risk amount could go up or it could go down. So if there's any disallowed losses, you cannot take them until the at risk, at, at risk amount is increased. And sometimes the at risk amount could be below zero, so you have to bring it above zero. Previously allowed losses must be recaptured to the extent that the at risk amount is reduced below zero. And we'll see this in a moment. At risk limitation may be, may be, must be commuted for each activity for the taxpayer separately. So if you have separate activities, you'll compute the at risk limitation for each individual separately. Now in the real world, this, this computation is important and this computation is on the side. So you want to make sure when you get a new client, you want to make sure that the previous CPA firm or the previous accountant did compute their at risk limitation because it does affect if they can take losses or not. And we looked at this calculation at risk amount in a prior session. And those are some of the, um, some of the activities that increases at risk and these are some of the activities that decreases the at risk limit the at risk amount okay they're basically the opposite of each other if you're not familiar with this see the related lecture now the interaction of the at risk rule with the passive passive active passive loss rules at risk limitation is applied first so if we so before we looked at the passive lo loss rules we have to know if we have anything at risk if we have something at risk, then we might have passive losses rule. If we don't have anything at risk, basically the, the losses are suspended and we'll see how. So at risk limitation is applied. Notice it's applied first. It's applied first to each activity to determine the maximum amount loss allowed for the year. Then after we determine the at risk limitation, then the passive limitation is applied. Then the passive loss limitation is applied to all the losses from all 
passive activities to determine the actual amount and the deductible amount for the year. Now, the only way you're going to learn this is to look at a multi-year example. Now, please bear with me as we're working through this. I'm going to be flipping between the PowerPoint slides as well as the Excel because you want to keep track of this in an Excel sheet. So let's go ahead and start this example. So notice it's a multi-year example. So this is the first year. Jake adjusted basis and a passive activity is 10,000 at the beginning of 2017. His loss from the activity in 2017 was 4,000 because, J okay, so let's stop right there. So let's stop right there and see what we are giving. We are told that Jake basis is $10,000. We are given this and we are told that his losses from the activity is $4,000. Okay, I'm going to go to the Excel sheet and what you should do too, you should basically prepare a similar Excel sheet to this one. So Jake's basis, the what we're starting with is $7,000. So let me just go like this. So that's his basis. And in 2017, he incurred $4,000 of losses. Guess what? What's that going to do to his adjusted basis? It's going to reduce his adjusted basis by 4000 And since, and what's going to happen, we're going to have a basis of 6000 by the end of 2017. Now, do we still have at-risk amount? Yes, his adjusted basis are 6000 We still have at-risk amount of 6000 Therefore, we have suspended passive activity loss of 4000 so now because we do have them, we can use them if needed, but we do have them. They're suspended in a sense that we, we cannot use them. So we have suspended passive activity losses because we cannot use them a $4,000. Okay. Do we have anything under loss suspended under the at risk rule? No, we do have enough at risk. Therefore, we don't have any losses suspended. And you're going to see what that means in a moment. But this is where we stand year one. Year one, we start with a basis of 10000 the uh, the taxpayer incurred the loss the loss would reduce the basis and it will we will have 4000 passive activity losses okay let's look at year 2 at year 2 jake has a loss of $9000 in the activity of 2018 so in 2018 this is the following year now jake has losses of $9000 all right so let's see what's going to happen now let's go back to the excel sheet now, 2019, we have losses of $9,000. Now, first thing is the basis. What's going to happen? The, the $9,000 loss, it's going to reduce our basis below zero, but we cannot reduce our basis below zero. Therefore, we can only reduce our basis to zero. So remember this. You could only reduce your basis to zero. So what's going to happen is we're going to have negative 6,000. Therefore, our basis at the end of 2018 is zero. Now, how much... Of the 9,000, we can have of suspended losses. Well, guess what? We have 9,000. That's, that's, that's good in a sense that we have deduction. However, since we only had $6,000 of basis, the only losses we can take is only 6,000. So now we have passive activity losses suspended, which we're not using, is an additional 6,000. Therefore, the balance is... 10,000. Now you might be saying, hold on a second. I had losses of 9,000. I can only take, I can only kind of count as passive activity losses at six. What happened to the other three? The other three is suspended under the at risk rules. Simply put, because we could not have enough. We don't have enough. We don't have enough basis. We don't have enough amount invested at risk. Now we have $3,000 of our losses is suspended under this rule. So simply put now, going forward, here's what's going to happen. Going forward, we cannot add to our passive activity losses until we until we remove this, this $3,000. So this $3,000 is suspended because we don't have anything at risk. Therefore, because we don't have anything at risk, we cannot count passive activity losses. We cannot count passive activity losses. But if you think about it, we could have potential passive activity losses, a total of 13,000. Hopefully you can see this. Hopefully you can see that potential potential passive activity losses is 13,000. 4,000 from 2017 and 9,000 from 2018. However, we have 3,000 suspended. We cannot use it unless we bring the basis because we our bases are zero. We have no 
think no risk no amount invested in the company right now so the at risk amount is below zero it's negative three thousand okay the basis is zero but the at risk amount is negative okay therefore we cannot take any passive activity losses unless we bring this at risk amount back to zero so this is 2018. let's see what happened in 2019. in 2019 let me just take a look take a look at this in 2019 here's what happened in 2019 Jake realized a $1,000 passive activity income from the activity in 2019. So here's what happened now. In 2019, we had a good year. We had a $1,000 income. So we had a $1,000 income. Now, what's going to happen is this. This $1,000 income, for one thing, because remember, if you have income, it's going to increase your basis and it's going to increase the at-risk amount. It's going to increase your basis by 1000 It's going to increase your basis by 1000 that's fine. It's going to increase your basis by a thousand. But remember, we are still negative. Okay, we are still negative. Um, it's going to increase our basis by a thousand, but we are still negative. Okay, now, the this one thousand dollar, it's going to reduce our at risk. It's going to reduce this from three thousand to two thousand. Okay, so this is going to reduce our basis, reduce our the suspended risk from 3,000, so it's going to be positive 1,000. And now we're down to $2,000 suspended. $2,000 suspended under the at risk rule. But here's what happened. Now we are going to bring this $10,000 down. So here's what's going to happen. Okay. Now, our potential passive activity losses in total is 12,000. 10,000 is suspended and 2,000 is suspended under the at risk rule. So the at risk rule is only 2,000, but we still have 10,000 act passive activity losses suspended. So total is 12. Talk about your basis. Your basis are, think of your basis as negative 2,000. We cannot have basis negative 2,000. We cannot have negative basis. But think of your basis of negative 2,000. What, what did I get that 2,000 from? It's because I have 2,000 of suspended loss under the at risk rule. So think of your basis are negative 2,000. Now, in 2019, what happened is this. So in 2019, so this is what happened in 2019. In 2019, Jake contributed $5,000. Jake contributed $5,000. So let's see what's going to happen because Jake contributed $5,000. It was not income. He just contributed $5,000. Remember, your basis is our negative $2,000. Once we contribute $5,000, your basis, they're going to go from negative 2 if you add 5. So your, your balance of your basis is 3. Now, here's what's going to happen. This $5,000... It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna reduce the amounts, the amount suspended under the at risk rule. Now we're, now we we cleared, we cleared the amount suspended under the at risk rule. Now what's gonna happen to this amount? This is down to zero. This is down to zero. Okay, this is down to zero. Now what we can do? Remember this two thousand that was suspended. Now it can be counted. Now basically we removed, we re reclassify it to here. So it's negative 2000. So think of, not think of this, it's reclassified. So this amount here is reclassified to negative 2000. So basically this amount that we could not, we could not use earlier, sorry, this amount that we could not use earlier since we contributed money, it's reclassified. Now our suspended activity losses is 12,000. Our suspended activity losses are 12, 12,000. And think of this, we did the same thing here. We, when we had a thousand dollar of income, we basically, we basically put 1000 here. Let me just show it to you, but I don't want to add it up because it kept it at 13,000. So there was, a, there was, let me just show you this. There was a thousand reclassified here. Just let me, okay. So here, let me just put a text here. I reclassified the one thousand dollar. Okay, um, there's a formula. Let me just uh, blah, 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 blah. 
let me just put a note here. I reclassified $1,000. The reason I did not show it, because although I reclassified the amount still, I could not increase the amount. I could not increase the amount. The amount stayed at 10000 That's why I did not put it here. But I was in total, the suspended passive activity losses and the suspended under the address rule were 12000 Okay, now... The 2000 that was suspended, now it's it's actual passive activity loss. Therefore, my ending balances under my adjusted basis is $3,000. Losses under, under at-risk rule is zero because I brought enough fund to the table and I have basis of 3000 and my suspended passive activity losses are 12000 Okay? Now, what does that mean? It means in the future, I can use... As of today, only 3,000 of this, 12,000, because I only have adjusted basis of 3,000. So if I have to use it, I only have to use 3,000. Okay? Hopefully, this example made sense. I hope it, do it, it does. I'm going to work another example. But again, it's a multi-year. So here's the ending balances. Here's the ending balances. Let's work another example on the Excel sheet, similar to this one. Okay? So let me just increase this. So five years ago, Gerald invested 150000 in a passive activity, his sole investment venture. On January 1st, his amount at risk in the activity was 30000 Simply put, when we started, his adjusted basis were the at risk amount is 30000 He had $17,000 of losses in 2017, in 2018, $30,000 of losses, and in 2019, $50,000 in, well, in gain, actually and income. Gerald hold no suspended at risk or passive activity loss at the beginning of the year. So those balances are zero. Okay. How can, how can Gerald deduct in 27, how much can Gerald deduct in 2017 and 2018? And what's the taxable income from the activity in 2019? Consider the at risk rule as well, the passive activity rules. Okay. So in 2017, here's what happened. In 2017, he incurred losses of $40,000. So this is what happened. Okay. And hopefully you can see this. So there was a losses of $40,000. Now, we have losses of $40,000. How much of those losses can we take? Those losses would reduce the basis down to zero. Okay? And we can only take how much of the losses? $30,000. Why? Because our basis were $30,000. Then what we do now, we have a suspended under at risk rule of ten thousand dollar, so the the losses of forty thousand reduce our basis to zero. Now we have loss suspended under the at risk rule of ten thousand, and passive activity losses suspended. We cannot use them thirty thousand dollar. Now we can no longer add to the suspended passive losses until we clear this five ten thousand dollar. In twenty eighteen, we had an additional losses of thirty thousand dollar. Guess what? That's going to increase our the loss suspended under the at risk rules. And think of now our basis is negative 40,000. Now think of the basis as negative 40,000. So think of the basis. Let me insert comment here. What is that? Uh, I can't see the insert insert comment. That's fine because it's here, but it's it's fine. But think of the basis of negative 40,000. Now, again, I cannot add, I cannot add to my suspended losses, but if I add them up, I have right now $70,000. Okay, hopefully you can see the $70,000 of suspended passive activity losses. 40,000, I cannot use at all. It's suspended under the address rule, although it's there as long as I can come up with you know, either income or contribution. Okay, but thirty thousand is suspended under the passive activity loss, and forty thousand under the address scroll. In twenty nineteen, Gerald had fifty thousand dollar of income. Well, what's gonna, what's this? What's this gonna do? We're gonna add fifty thousand dollar here, and when we add the fifty thousand, remember the basis were negative forty. Now the basis are ten because I said. Think of the basis as negative forty. Okay, so if the if the basis were negative forty thousand, 
plus 50,000 of income, that's going to make the basis 10,000. Okay, why negative? Why negative 40? Why were they negative 40? I started with 30,000. Okay, then I incurred losses of 70,000 between 2017 and 2018. Okay, so I started with 30. If you, if you started with 30, then I had losses of negative 30, which made them zero. Then I had losses of negative 40, which has made it negative 40 of the basis. Then I contributed 50. Now mine is 10. Now, when I made this profit, this the this amount loss suspended loss suspended under the address rule. It's going to go from this column to this column. It's going to go from this column to this column. Now I can count those losses. I can count those losses. Therefore, I'm going to remove them from this column. I'm going to I'm going to remove them from this column. It's going to be forty thousand. I'm going to remove them from this column. Basically. Losses suspended under the address rule is zero, and I'm going to move them to this column. So my, so basically they went from here to here. They went from here to here. Let's, but this is negative. They went from here to here. Okay. Then now I have seventy thousand. But remember, I made a profit of fifty. Therefore, therefore, what's going to happen is this. All right. So I have 30,000 of losses, more losses that now I can count because at risk, uh, I no longer have anything sus suspended under the at risk, then I'm going to add the income. Therefore, now I have I, I have 20,000 of passive activity losses. Now I have 20,000. Therefore, my ending balance in the passive activity losses is 20,000. My adjusted basis is 10,000. Now you might be saying, what is the taxable amount from the activities in twenty in twenty nineteen? Zero, zero. Because although we made fifty thousand dollar, fifty thousand dollar in income, uh, fifty thousand dollar in passive income. However, we had enough losses. We have enough losses to make this to make this income not taxable. In what sense? In a sense that we have enough losses if we have enough losses and we still have more losses we still have twenty thousand dollar of losses for which we can only use ten thousand if we have anything because we only have adjusted basis of ten thousand or the at risk amount of ten thousand but nevertheless none of it is taxable none of it is none of it is taxable so at the end of the year of 2019 our adjusted basis is ten thousand our suspended Passive activity losses is twenty thousand, and our losses suspended under the at risk rule is zero because we we made enough income to to bring our basis up to zero. So we we do have some uh, some 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 allowed some losses allowed to be deducted in the future. Again, uh, this topic is uh, it's the uh, the at risk rule plus the passive activity loss rule interaction together so uh, hopefully you don't get this question on the CPA exam if I when I'm when I teach this course I do give a similar question maybe not for multiple year but I want to make sure you understand what goes first how do we treat the at risk the at risk rule with the uh, suspended losses if you have any questions by all means email me if you need additional lectures especially if you know how to learn about the at risk limitation separately and the passive activity losses limit separately go see those lectures on my website if you happen to do so please consider donating good luck